Sunday. Sundays and Thursdays are days of mindfulness in Plum Village. The whole of the monastery gets together, Upper Hamlet where I was staying, Lower Hamlet and New Hamlet. The day was happening at New Hamlet so I'd get to see Andrea, my saviour from the travel nightmare, and Letizia, a friend from my home Sangha in the UK. I'd been joining the Sangha on Zoom since I'd moved house so I hadn't actually met her in person before. I always find it a bit strange meeting someone in person that you've seen so many times online, an experience that I was getting used to post-pandemic as we started to spend more time together in the office. It was a day full of practice, beginning with a Dharma talk. A Dharma talk is a bit like a long sermon, if like me you're from a Christian background. The sermons I grew up with in a little Catholic church in my village in Ireland were not massively inspiring, I have to say. It tended to be 15 minutes on whatever had annoyed the parish priest that week. Dharma talks were different. They were funny, they were inspiring, and they used stories to challenge your assumptions about the world and help to guide you through applying the principles of the Buddha's teachings to your life. It was energizing and uplifting, exactly what I wished the sermons I grew up with could be. I remember there was one priest, Father Carlin, who would occasionally give Mass in our village. He always told stories from his childhood that resonated, that made you think about your life. Unfortunately, this was the exception in my part of Catholic Ireland rather than the rule. The Dharma talk led by one of the monastics told a story about a Vietnamese king called Tran Tai Kong. Apologies to Vietnamese listeners for the pronunciation. He was a scholar king that wrote books about Buddhism, and his grandson actually gave up the throne after 400 years of peace to become a monk and focus on a spiritual practice. Talk about letting go of your attachments. One of his practices was to focus on one of his senses every day. I could imagine getting looks from people at work if I was going around smelling everything, but this was genuinely something that I was excited to give a try. The brother then discussed Dharma doors, ways that you can awaken your awareness and gain insight into your life. These are different for everyone. It might be contemplating a particular subject like emptiness. It could be something physical like yoga or focusing on one of your senses as King Tran did. I could cover a lot here, but one other topic the brother discussed was enjoying our normal life just as it is and letting go of striving. We often feel that we need to achieve more and more in order to be content, that our happiness is somewhere in the future once certain conditions are met, but we find once we reach the destination that it's not what we expected and the treasure map that we've been following ultimately leads to a chest full of disappointment. So we get back on the horse and we keep on going and going and going until we reach Not the end of the road, but the end of our lives. And we realise that we spent it doing things that were supposed to make us happy in the future, instead of enjoying the present. It was an interesting and entertaining talk. The brothers are surprisingly relaxed, casual and approachable. I was struggling to focus towards the end though. I'd slept well, but felt sluggish from the adjustment to communal life. In my mind, I was thrown back to Friday afternoon geography back at the Catholic school I'd attended. This was a lot more interesting, but the human mind can only focus for so long. At least my human mind can only focus for so long. After the talk, we went for a walking meditation with the monastics and other retreatants. If you hadn't done walking meditation with a Sangha before, it can initially feel a little strange. The first time I came to a Plum Village Sangha meeting, I watched people walking slowly in a circle and found it slightly comical. It reminded me of the monks in Monty Python and Holy Grail. P.A. Lezu Domine, Dona Eis Requiem. Whack. Uh, If you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, look it up. You can see it on YouTube. But I quickly found that walking slowly together as a Sangha in harmony is a wonderful experience, especially outside in nature. Focusing your awareness on the soles of your feet, imprinting peace on the earth, 
noticing the changes in your body was a way to not just ground yourself in the present moment, but to actually achieve union with reality. I'd heard a story a long time ago about Thich Nhat Hanh leading one of these walking meditations in Plum Village and breaking into a sprint. The image of an elderly monk sprinting through the woods with a massive crowd trying to keep up with him was hilarious, but as with everything he did, it had a purpose and meaning. It's easy for your mind to wander when you've been walking for a while, not on Ty's watch. Walking through the orchard shoulder to shoulder with men and women who had devoted their lives to practicing mindfulness and spent a great deal of time with Ty, I wished not for the first time that I could have met him myself. I ran into Letizia on the way back and we lined up for lunch, a delicious smelling lentil curry with rice. We walked over to the main meditation hall where the monastics and many of the retreatants were eating, except they weren't eating, and I suddenly remembered that most of the time in retreat you waited until everyone had their food before you started. It just hadn't happened yesterday as it was Saturday. As we sat in silence in the hall, my stomach growled loudly. I had forgotten how difficult practicing patience was with food. It had been a couple of years since I was on retreat. Eat me, said the food. Eat me now, I'm delicious. This was Buddhism's only form of torture, or at least it felt that way to me. Patience is not one of my stronger qualities, and after what felt like an absolute age, everyone had filed in and the bell was invited. First we will read the five contemplations. The bowl of food laughed. Later, as we ate, the monastics shared stories and thoughts on the practice. It felt intimate, even in such a large hall. The microphone was eventually passed to the eldest sister, a little old lady in a wheelchair who entertained the sangha with her experiences, but most of all with her voice. She sang songs with a surprisingly strong Shirley Bassey-style vibrato, while the monastics shared more food around the group, a tradition started by Thai, and continued after his passing. We had some time to relax before the final activity of our day of mindfulness, Dharma sharing. This, in a nutshell, is talking about our experience of practicing mindfulness, what you're enjoying, what you're struggling with, and what you're feeling more widely. If you haven't tried this, then I would highly recommend finding out more. It's part of a weekly Sangha meeting, and it is incredibly liberating. What's shared with the group is only for the group, but before we started, we went around and each of us gave one word about how we were feeling about settling into Plum Village. Many people said that they were feeling anxious. It really wasn't just me. Then it was time to go. I said goodbye to Letizia and Andrea and got on a bus to Upper Hamlet. An American I hadn't met before called Seth sat down next to me and we introduced ourselves. Seth was a very interesting guy, an ex-data scientist. He was now a seminary student living in California. We talked about the experience of the Rains retreat and what had drawn us to mindfulness in the first place. Both of us had the experience of not being attracted to organized religion, but also feeling a need to nurture our spiritual side, a kind of secular spirituality. Seth has a YouTube channel, the link is in the description, and we talked about the experience of writing and putting content out there into an unforgiving social media environment. I'm talking to you Reddit, damn you guys can be harsh. As the bus was pulling into Upper Hamlet, the conversation had moved into the crisis in young men and their radicalization by so-called alpha males who preyed on their loneliness. We picked up our stuff, still talking, and stepped off. I had the oddest feeling of having had one conversation with someone, someone from a radically different background to me, but knowing that we had somehow lived parallel lives, if that makes any sense. As we said our goodbyes, I had the strange feeling he was thinking the same thing. We agreed to meet up at the tea house the next day. I had dinner with Ian, his partner Heather, and a few of the other retreatants that evening. Ian was someone I had co-facilitated the Be Can Be Happy course with. 
We both had a passion for trying to get more men practicing mindfulness and the idea of mindfulness triggering social change. His partner Heather and I were meeting in person for the first time at Plum Village and she was easy to talk with and very funny. She was one of a small number of women in Upper Hamlet as it was only bookable by men and couples. Having people I already knew here was comforting and took the edge off my social anxiety enough to get to know more of the folks at our dining table that I hadn't chatted to, including Boucher, a Spanish farmer who was bunking in the upper part of my dorm. Later, as I lay in bed with Tai's book, Heart of the Buddha's Teaching, or Hotbot as I call it, I thought, maybe I can do the socialising thing. 9.30 arrived, time for lights out, and as I lay my head down in the pillow, I took an immediate express train to Sleepyland. I fell asleep quickly, is, is basically what I'm saying. Thank you for listening, my friend. If you're enjoying the Plum Village Dairy, then why not become a patron? Uh, the link is in the description, and you can listen to the next section of the diary. May you be happy, may you be peaceful. Mm-hmm.